Welcome to the Delaware Center for the Inland Bays, headquartered at the beautiful Indian River Bay at the Delaware Seashore State Park. The center is a private, nonprofit organization committed to protecting, preserving, and restoring the Inland Bays and their watershed. We're also proud to serve as one of 28 national estuary programs in the country. For those of you joining us near and far, we're excited to take you on a virtual journey, highlighting two of the center's newest projects focused on the iconic and quite lovable Dimeback Terrapin Turtle. That's right. This spring and summer, uh, the center started our long-term terrapin monitoring survey and terrapin garden project in order to protect, conserve, and better understand this dynamic species. Today, we're even going to be joined by a special guest, Nori the terrapin herself. So let's go out there and take a look. Diamondback terrapins are the only true estuarine turtle in North America, spending their entire lives in coastal marshes like those found right here in Delaware's inland bays, which consist of three interconnected bodies of water, the Indian River Bay, Little Assa Woman Bay, and Rehoboth Bay. Terrapins play a very important role in helping to maintain balanced and healthy marsh ecosystems by eating salt marsh snails that feed on smooth cord grass. Though they're considered an aquatic species, terrapins do breathe oxygen and come ashore to lay their eggs along sandy beaches. They can live up to approximately 25 years old, and throughout their lives, they face multiple challenges, including natural predators, such as fox, raccoon, and gulls, as well as those linked to human activity. The biggest threats include the loss of prime nesting habitat due to coastal development, collisions with cars, particularly between May and July when females are crossing roadways in search of suitable nesting sites, as well as boating strikes and drowning in crab pots. Little is known about the status of terrapin populations in the inland bays. So in an effort to learn more and ultimately help with conservation efforts, the center launched the Dimeback Terrapin Survey in 2020. Around the same time, the center also kicked off a new terrapin garden project in direct response to habitat loss. Now let's go take a deeper dive into each of these projects. The Terrapin Survey is a long-term citizen science project with the goal of studying terrapin populations throughout the inland bays and how they may be changing over time in different places. There are a total of 22 sites that are monitored between May and June, and the data is collected in two ways. The first is by land. Through this method, surveyors can go to any spot along the shoreline to observe and report terrapins they see. Oh, and here comes Nori the terrapin. Perfect timing to help us with the second method, and this time it's by water. Here, a pair of surveyors in either a kayak or a small boat follow preset routes and count the terrapins they see. There are eight water-based routes in total, some of which pass through the most beautiful salt marsh areas in the bays. The team works together to count and record the number of terrapins they see, along with their GPS location. This year was our first year completing our terrapin survey. In the first two weeks of June, we paddled over 13 miles and counted over 1,100 terrapins throughout the inland bays. We saw an average of 82 terrapins per one mile paddled and started to gain a better understanding of their populations in the inland bays. Our goal is to continue to paddle these same locations each year to see if their population changes over time. I think it's now time for us to go take a look at the center's second terrapin project that just launched this year. In an effort to help support terrapin populations in the inland bays, the center is working to construct a series of terrapin gardens, like this pilot garden installed by the center's office. The purpose of these sandy patches is to provide suitable locations for female terrapins to lay their eggs along the inland bays. The gardens will also serve as a unique outdoor interpretive opportunity to increase public understanding of and appreciation for terrapins and further inspire support for the protection of this iconic species. Following installation, our pilot garden was monitored between June and August to document any terrapin nesting and or predator activity. Breaking the sand in a uniform pattern was done to help spot animal tracks and dig marks in between monitoring days. While no nests were found during the first year, staff did spot some other wildlife tracks, including raccoon, deer, birds, and possibly fox. Protective cages were prepared in advance, just in case any terrapin nests were found. 
These cages are intended to be installed over confirmed nests in an effort to keep out predators while still allowing hatchlings to fit through the holes and make their journey to the water. The center's long-term goal is to expand the project, installing additional gardens that support terrapin nesting activity throughout the inland bays, while also providing outdoor interpretive sites that engage the public. And that's a wrap. We hope that you enjoyed this special virtual tour of the center's two Dimeback Terrapin projects. To learn more about the center and projects just like these, uh, head to our website or check out our social media pages. We also have a free online newsletter that we highly encourage you sign up for.